The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hey everyone, this is episode three of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. I'm Craig Williams. And I'm Sean Thompson. And uh, today's topic is why Sean looks like that, I guess. Yeah, it's really scary. Um, no, actually, that's a, uh, that's a free mask that you can get at the, uh, the newest restaurant at CityWalk, Antojitos. And it just so happens that we're going to talk about Antojitos today. Um, I, it, it's a hard subject. We've been there three times now in the past. In week. the past five days, actually. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's kind of getting old for us, but um, it, it's still relatively new. It's only been open about two weeks. So um, it's very important, I guess, to talk about it, especially if you're coming. It's vital. To, it's crucial, actually. It's vital, mm-hmm. yeah. People will not survive the night if they don't hear about Antojitos. That's weird. Authentic yeah. Mexican restaurant. Um, but before we jump into that, I just want to talk about a uh, few things. Um, I know before we said that we were going to talk about Mardi Gras. Yeah, because that started last weekend. It did. It started last weekend, and I, I hate to break the news, but... We missed Daughtry. We missed Daughtry. We went there, and it was it was raining, and... And not like a nice, like, kind of sprinkling rain. It was gross rain, kind of cold. Yeah. It, People it, were crying on the streets. It I, was, I was crying, and... Yeah. You know, the one thing I'm not going to do is risk my camera just to get footage of Daughtry. Or your tears. (laughs) (laughs) But no, uh, well, on the next show, we'll definitely be covering Mardi Gras since we didn't get to do it. Yeah, so I think we're going to probably do it a couple times in between now and... uh, yeah, the next got, time we do a Universal show, so we'll have plenty of experience. We'll yeah, photos. I mean, this week you have food. um, what the bare naked ladies coming yep, up on as Saturday. well as Taylor Rhett or something like I'm that. I'm not familiar with that person. Yeah, I, I don't know who he is, but the bare naked ladies that that should be a good a good one. That will be good. Yeah, I I always enjoy hearing the story of how the bare naked ladies got their name. Do you know that? I don't. Please enthrall us. Um, apparently they used to play at small clubs and they wanted people to come see them but they weren't coming in their original name. So the only reason they could get people in the door is because uh. they changed their name to Bare Naked Ladies. So everyone just ran in. So I, I don't know if that's true. If it's not, Kylie's been lying to me for like about two years now. It's, it's a very dad story. Like, it, uh, I, well, <laughs> my dad told me this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in Mardi Gras news, actually, the final three announcers or performers were announced. Yeah. And um, I'm a genius, by the way. You, you are a genius. The, uh, I totally called it. Kelly May- Rowland is coming on March 28th. Yeah. Not know. with Nelly, which is annoying. I wish that they were going on the same day so they could sing their their hit song Dilemma. And I'm still not aware. You I have mean, no idea who she is. She but of, of the three people in Destiny's Child, she's the second most recognizable. So it's Beyoncé obviously, then Kelly Rowland, and then no one ever knows who Michelle Williams I, is. I, not Heath Ledger's I, wife. Okay, never it's mind. It's a different Michelle Williams. I won't go there then. Um, <laughs> on May 17th, the Roots are going to be there. So Without Jimmy Fallon or with Jimmy Fallon? You know what? I would love for Jimmy Fallon to be there, but I just have a feeling he's not going to be. Yeah, yeah probably. I, I, I guess that's the end of their season, so they won't be filming anymore. So they're going to do their brief little tour around. I think it's actually one of the bigger names. Uh, as soon as they're on The Tonight Show, they're going to become even more recognizable than they are now. So. Well, just like um, Kevin, what, what was his name? Jay Leno's uh, band Kevin leader. Eubanks. Kevin Eubanks. Yes. Yeah. He's Kevin not Eubanks. him anymore, right? He left. He left. There was a new guy. Yeah. I, so, I, I mean, it, le- it, it, it shoots you into instant success, really. I'm a Jimmy Kimmel guy. I know you are. That's, I know. So, um, I'm ready for Seth Meyers and Fred Armisen. Yeah, that's going to be good. Yeah. But um, back on track. Uh, and then on May 24th, the final spot was Cher Lloyd. Who is the, the world's most, his second most famous Cher. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> she she was on the X Factor in Britain. Yeah, and she is British. That makes her British. Um, and it does, she I didn't think. win. So no, she didn't. But she's tiny and kind of like spunky, I, and I she think grunts like, a lot in all of her songs. Yeah, I think I looked it up, and she came in like fourth place. So good for her. Yeah. Um, her most popular song is "Want You Back," spelled with like the U is just the the letter U. She went to the um, Avril Lavigne School yeah. of Songwriting titles and. I, I listened to it this morning. I promise it was not good. 
in any way. It, it's um, okay. It's very poppy. Like I said, she grunts and everything. There's going to be a lot of teeny boppers <laughs> there. So if you don't want to see them, please avoid Universal on that night. Um, but I think that's all the news for Mardi Gras. But uh, before we move on to Antihitos, once again, <laughs> I just wanted to plug our YouTube channel, the WDW Info Diz YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't already subscribe to our channel, go ahead and... Press, What's wrong with you? Yeah, first. Press the red button that says subscribe. Um, it boosts our ego, and it also means you'll be notified anytime anything new happens. I think you get an email, a text message, um, a bird, like a pigeon comes to your house. Yeah, I, you have, know. I have a dove that flies dove. In through the window. It's peaceful. It is. Yeah. It's, it's serenity. Um, now. But also, a, a really fun thing to do is share our videos if you actually like them. <laughs> I thought um, you meant share at first. Uh, no. Like this thing or share. Oh, so many shares. But no, nah, go ahead and share our video uh, if you actually like it at YouTube. Or, well, not on YouTube, but on Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. Google Plus, I guess you could say. Google YouTube, Plus, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it's easy. If you want us to keep doing this, then uh, the more people that know, then the more we'll be motivated. So go ahead and do that. And then the easiest parts, liking videos and disliking videos, thumbs up, thumbs down. Um, it, it's simple. It takes one click. And if you have more than one second to click, then also comment. Tell us how terrible we are. Um, T tell me how little I smile and these are long instructions and they're getting personal. They are just know that we read the comments and we respond to them as, as we see fit. So. We do. <laughs> so, you know, go ahead and participate. And so now that you sat through our 20 minute lecture on what you should and shouldn't I'm do, bored. um, you're bored. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about antigitos. I mean, antihitos. I don't think that's um, how you say it. Yeah. That's not how you say it, but antihitos, authentic Mexican restaurant, newly opened at city walk. So, like a lot of the restaurants at City Walk, well, not like a lot of them, but this is actually one that Universal created uh -huh. and came up with on their own. Um, Emeralds is obviously by Emerald. Um, is it? It, I think so. Oh. Isn't that his face on the wall whenever you walk in? I don't know. I thought it was Wolfgang Puck. Okay. Uh, Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. That's Hard Rock Cafe. Who is Hard Rock? Is he like the rock? <laughs> yes. Okay. The NASCAR sports. That's, I hate but that I, yeah. I think you guys get the point. It's it's its own kind of creation, which is uh, something Universal's just definitely been going crazy with lately with Springfield USA and some of the other new dining locations that are going to open up. I mean, there are chains coming, but yeah. uh, they're, they're definitely focusing on new, fresh, creative things coming. And uh, here's Antihitos, which took over Latin Quarter. Yeah, so it's in the back. It's kind of right behind Emeralds next to the karaoke place or it's near. It's next to the groove and then a little bit down from the karaoke okay. place. It's almost I still get confused back there. It's kind of sandwiched between Margaritaville mm -hmm. and the groove. Okay. But then once the Universal stores opened up, then it's going to be right behind it. Behind and it's it. also going to be right next to the Hot Dog Hall of Fame. So, so that's a fun day. Go get your souvenirs, go get a hot dog, and then finish at Anahitos. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it took over Latin Quarter. So that was a, a big, big loss. Um, I, I never ate there. I didn't even know they had Are food you being there. sarcastic or are you being serious? I'm being very sarcastic. Oh, okay. I didn't know that you could eat there. I always went there with friends, and they got drinks and stuff. Yeah. And that's all I thought it was for. But, um, you know, it's the theme of the restaurant is straight out of street carts and cantinas of Mexico City. And... Uh, I, on first oppression, I would say I first didn't, oppression. Oppression. Yeah. First, I I don't know what I'm saying. No, but you're good. Um, it, you you walk up to it. We've talked about it before on air. Yeah, it's it's a giant church. It's huge. So the building is yeah. really big. There's two floors. You can see kind of the upstairs balcony. Um, and like Craig said, it's the shape of a church, and so it has a big steeple. Mm -hmm. And at the tip of the steeple is not this woman. It is a it, weather vane. It's not all the people, huh? It's not this. No, it's Never not mind. It, it was like this is church. The oh, steeple, why over. would they be on the steeple? Never. They're inside. They're the congregation. I'm not They're the fingers. To you. Come on. Okay. Anyway, so there's a big weather vane on the top, and it's like a man. I don't know. Is he playing guitar or something? He's like on a bike. Yeah. It, it's. I don't know. It's like, like it looks like a weather vane. There's a figure. Um. So yeah, it's a big church, and it looks like it was covered in paintball guns, yeah. like as if they had taken the paint and airbrushed the building. So it's mm -hmm. very colorful, uh, reds, greens, whatever. And there's like uh, Christmas lights on the. The yeah. columns and everything is and really, then, really well, bright. You can see the patio from the outside uh, that provides lots of seating. And then there's also a drink bus that's kind of set up outside that looks like a uh, VW bus. Oh, yeah. And um, 
But then once you walk inside, that's whenever you really get a feel for the restaurant. And it, it does have that very urban vibe, I guess, to it. Like, it does, yeah. And um, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but the restaurant is split up into two halves. So uh -huh. there's the downstairs, which has a different menu, different decor, different kind of atmosphere than the upstairs does. Exactly. Um, which is a little bit more upscale. It's kind of upstairs, you know, they have a kind of fancier menu. Yep. Um, and with that, the decor changes. So downstairs is downstairs is very urban. Yeah. There's a lot of graffiti. There's a lot of like um, neon lights kind of uh, decoration pieces. Um, but it, it looks beautiful. Oh, like, it's great. It, it's it doesn't really look interesting. Like terrible graffiti. Um, oh, no, no, no. The one scary part about it is uh, the the baby dolls. Yeah. So the, there is a scary wall as you walk to the bathroom of naked baby dolls covered in like weird graffiti marker yeah. painting. And they all look demonic. But we'll have a photo of that so you can yeah stare at it later but the i mean the theming kind of what what the theme of the restaurant was that what they actually did with the design it really kind of hit it it looks beautiful in there the yeah. first time i saw it i was kind of taken aback by how well they they did what they wanted to do in there yeah and um, downstairs there's a big stage a big kind of wooden area um the back wall i think is kind of this galvanized kind of cool like sheet steel or yep. whatever it looks really neat very urban um the tables are kind of long wooden reclaimed uh like yep. wood there's sanded down there's like nicks in it and everything it looks really cool yeah um but yeah the, well they have the stage and that's where the mariachi band will perform from time to time but not only that they also perform like all around the restaurant they do walk around and then embarrass yeah. you at your table and on the balcony even they'll stand mm -hmm. up outside oh and there's the start babies playing yeah yeah those oh those babies <laughs> they're awful <laughs> Um, yeah, so they do sing, and it's kind of interesting. They do a kind of a mix of um, traditional mariachi music, um, where the lyrics are obviously in Spanish, and then they also do kind of current, up-to-date hits. So they, they do Wrecking Ball, a lot of Bruno Mars. They're really big Bruno Mars fans. They are. Um, but they're great. They're really talented. <laughs> oh, they really are, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's funny to kind of listen, and every once in a while, you'll, you'll forget that they're playing like current songs, and then you'll hear like a chord or something, and you'll be like, oh, wait, this is Miley Cyrus. Yeah, but it will scare you, obviously, too, every time they start up out of nowhere, and they're just kind of coming right behind you with their <laughs> horns and their their guitars. It's it's very overwhelming. But yes. um, be, besides the mariachi band, also another form of entertainment that I want to mention is the mask artists that are set up there on Wednesdays to Sundays. Um, they'll be there basically the entire time the restaurant's open from what I understand, but you can get a mask painted that looks like the one that Sean was wearing at the start of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that creepy thing. And they have different uh, varieties. Some are sugar skulls like the one I got. Some are just plain yeah. color that they can do like kind of cool um, stitching designs around yeah. the mouth and the and eyes. You'd be able to see mine except I left it at home yeah. um, after telling Sean that he had to remember to bring his. <laughs> so that was always yeah, that's nice. That was nice of me. Typical Craig. Um, but yeah, and then kind of circling back around too. So with the seating and everything, there's a bar right whenever you walk in. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bar upstairs because as you'll hear us talk about, alcohol is a very, 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 very important part. It Anahitas. is. I think it's probably the best part of Anahitas. It is. Yeah. And I mean, the food's important too. It is a restaurant. But uh, right now, I think we're going to take a quick break. And then whenever we come back, we will actually talk about the food and, and the drinks. The drinks. Yeah. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect trip to Universal, whether you stay on-site at one of the world-class hotels or are in need of theme park tickets with round-trip transportation to and from Walt Disney World. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. So we're back. Yeah, we are back, and we're yeah, talking yeah. about soup. Well, we're going to talk about all forms of food, I think. Well, all forms of food that they actually serve at Antojitos. Not Belgian for... waffles? Well, um, no, not not there. All unless right. it's Antojitos Authentic Belgian. That's opening next week, I think. Ooh. Well, we'll have to go to that as well, too. But uh, do you want to start upstairs or downstairs? Um, actually, let's start with downstairs. Okay. Because that's when you, you first walk in. So there's a podium downstairs. Um for the downstairs dining area. So if you want to eat either outside on the patio mm -hmm. or just at any of the tables downstairs, that's the pet that's the podium yeah. you go to. If you ever if you want to go upstairs, then you go straight upstairs to that podium. So don't ever wait downstairs in a long line thinking that you just want to go upstairs. Yeah. So. And it will be very crowded yeah. on Friday, Saturday nights. Um just walk right around them. They're probably going to yell at you, scream, say you're cutting, just all that punch stuff. Punch a few people. Just as I always do, punch a few babies and you can get around. Um, 
But yeah, downstairs, that's where the authentic Mexican food comes into play, I guess. Well, yeah. not really well, authentic, but more mainstream, more what we think of whenever you hear Mexican food. Yeah, so burritos, tacos, nachos. Well, I don't think they even have any burritos on the menu, though. There's Do one they? burrito. I almost got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so enchiladas, tacos, fa- fajitas, um, mm-hmm. all those things. So whenever we went, the first thing we went with was the uh, queso fudido la generale, I think. Sure, that's authentic. Yeah, it was... It was queso, but it wasn't really queso that when you like when you think of it though. Yeah, I, so it doesn't come with chips, which I would think queso would mm-hmm. come with. This comes with what four flour tortillas. Yes, and a little kind of uh, iron skillet, kind of little pot thing. Yeah, and we open it up, and it's like solid melted cheese. So yeah. it's melty and soft in a way like you could probably like stretch it. Obviously, exactly, but you're going to want to cut it into chunks and put it on the tortilla. Yeah. And it's definitely not your normal version of queso. Yeah. So don't order it thinking that you're going to get the queso that you would get at Moe's or exactly. any of those kind of restaurants. Yeah. It's not. It was um, delicious, but it was very greasy oh, yeah. and interesting. Yeah, I mean, it had chorizo sausage in there. Yeah. So anytime I hear that, I'm basically sold. Um, also, as an appetizer, they give you chips and salsa. Yeah, like, we got chips and salsa. They just bring it to your table. Or, exactly. Mm-hmm. Any standard Mexican restaurant. But, um, I mean, the chips and salsa are great. I think the salsa is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they also have one of their specialty appetizers is a guacamole cart. We're going to talk about that upstairs because that's where we had it. Uh-huh. But you can also order it downstairs. You can even order it at the bar, which yeah. is funny because what happens is this little man comes around. Well, he's not a little man. He's a full-size man. But he comes around with a cart with these ingredients and he makes the guacamole right next to your uh, table or whatever. So if you're at the bar, he'll just come up and park right behind you and make your uh, make your guacamole yeah. for you. So, but anyway, <laughs> we'll talk about that later when we yeah, go upstairs. Well, um, but onto the entrees at least. Uh, I know you had the duck tacos. I did. So, um, they have a selection of tacos, and my first question was, because you get three for an entree, I wanted to see if you could get three different ones, because yeah. I would have preferred that. Have one duck, one beef, whatever. Um, they said at this time, no, you can only yeah. get three of the same kind of variety. So I ended up going with the duck, and they were good, although I felt like um, the taco shells were a little stale. Yeah. Is what I, I kind of felt. But huh. they were still good. They came with rice and beans, which were very good. The price for these was fourteen ninety five, which I felt was a little expensive. Yeah. Because they're not big tacos. You get little little tacos that come in this little stand. and Yeah, they're definitely not like Taco Bell-sized taco. Yeah. Um, they're definitely more gourmet tacos, if anything. And uh, uh, they, they didn't look that big. Um, I don't know if the price point was there on it. I obviously didn't try any no. of your tacos. It was kind of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought the flavor was delicious. Yeah. I loved the filling. Um, but like I said, 15 seemed too steep yeah. for that. But yeah. maybe once they do the combination, because they said they are working yeah. on it. Um, I don't think the menus right now are set in stone. No. They're going to still try to tweak. It's and only been a week works. officially. So. Yeah. So that could still change. Um, for mine, I actually did go with a combination plate. They only have technically three combination plates. Uh, one is a a meaty combination then the other is a vegetarian one and then there's a fajita combination um so i went with the meat one um that's that's my voice goes down like five octaves when you say meat i know yeah but that's that's what's gonna happen so uh on my combination plate it had a pork tamale topped with ropa i i can't say these words um uh enchilada verda which is a green sauce enchilada Mm -hmm. and then a carne molida taco um, and then it also came with the rice and beans, the same ones that you had. Uh, honestly, my food, it was all good. Uh, the enchilada is verda. That was my least favorite. I, I've had it at other places before. It's, it's enchiladas. Mm-hmm. If, if you like them, you don't. Or you do. And if you don't, then you don't. My taco was great. The, the meat was very flavorful. I don't know what kind of meat it was. I just know it was meat. Um, but... <laughs> A little bit of my uh, soft shell was also just a tiny it bit It was weird. Stale. It was like the, the, the edges of it. Yeah, the edges were yeah. just a bit stale. I don't know if it was overcooked or... I don't even know if it was like a heat lamp. If it's sitting under... I don't yeah. know. It was weird. It I was... mean, my natural instinct would say it's stale, but I I don't know. It, yeah. it probably wasn't. Um, the pork tamale, the pork on top of it was extremely flavorful. The tamale itself was... It, it was almost there. Um, I, I don't know if mine was under seasoned or if it didn't... If it didn't get cooked long enough and get some of the flavors in there, um, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. But you know, it's 
kind of with everything that we tried downstairs. I've had similar things at other places and it was just kind of middle of the road for yeah. me. And for me, I thought the division between the up downstairs and upstairs was going to be a lot um, bigger. So I yeah. thought upstairs was going to be kind of a, a classier kind of sit down experience, which it was. But then I thought in reverse, the downstairs was going to be more street food, very casual, yeah. c- almost in like a Chipotle or a Moe's kind of way where it was just quick food, really kind of easy, yeah. delicious, flavorful stuff like that. And it didn't seem to be. It seemed more like a, a chain Mexican restaurant. Yeah. And I mean, that's kind of the food you got. <laughs> the prices, like my combination plate was sixteen ninety five. You could obviously go to a dive Mexican place and get it for $10, $12. Yeah. Um, but obviously at a theme park, you're going to pay a little more. I don't think sure. it was outrageous. Um, you know, right after I paid the bill, I, it was one of those things like, was it worth that? Uh, after a couple of days thinking about it, it, it was really worth it. What I got, I was sure. full whenever I left uh-huh. that had nothing to do with the, uh, the amount of cheese wad that we ate. Well, yeah. Um, but like, you know, it's easy to also fill up there because it's endless chips and salsa. Well, that's the thing. We probably filled so, up a lot on the chips. Yeah, I definitely did. Do you want to talk about the drinks we had downstairs now, or do you want to save drinks until the end? Um, let's save drinks until okay, the end. sure. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important parts. For sure. Um, but, yeah, do we want to... Well, let's first go upstairs. And then yep. Corey also, uh, he wasn't able to be here to talk, <laughs> but he also went with uh, Jolie Martin. And he's Corey Martin, obviously, if you watch the show normally. <laughs> if you don't, then... Let's uh, make a family tree. Yes. Well, uh, Corey no. and Julie took their kids, Ferris and Finley, yeah. to try out the downstairs uh, section of the restaurant. Yep. Um, so we have a few notes from him. We do. And I didn't have them pulled up and ready, so we'll talk about them after we talk about upstairs. Oh, okay. And then we'll come sure. back down to downstairs. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, just so, you know, I'm not confused. As sure. Yeah, be. yeah, of course. But, <clears throat> okay, upstairs. Let's do it. All right, so uh, let's go back to the guacamole because we ordered the guacamole when we ate upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's thirteen ninety five, which is kind of at first when you hear that it's fourteen dollars for guacamole, it seems a little freaky. Seems steep. It does, um, but you get two full avocados, so that makes a lot of of guacamole. And then you can choose bet- with um, lime, tomato, garlic, red onion, green olives, and cilantro. And like I said, he has a little cart. He comes around mm-hmm. and makes it right in front of you. He asks if you want it spicy, if you want it mild. Um, kind of your taste yeah. um, preferences. I will say that both times we asked for it spicy and it was not spicy at all. Yeah, it, it wasn't spicy. No. Um, I wouldn't even say that it it attempted to be spicy no. with extra extra different things hidden in there. Jalapeno um, or I, yeah, they have jalapenos on there and obviously mm-hmm. they throw more and more in, but jalapenos get their spiciness from the seed and these look like yeah. it's more the actual pepper that go in. That being said though, it is fantastic guacamole. Oh, yeah, the avocados are so yeah. extremely fresh. Like I I buy avocados all the time at the supermarket. I've never had avocados that were this perfect. Uh, yeah. It just it was creamy. It was delicious. Mm-hmm. So um that's it it's my highest recommendation of anything to get there this is my second for me oh yeah. what was your first versus the entree but we'll oh, talk yeah. about that um, uh, um then yeah. another appetizer we got was the trio empanadas and you got three of of empanadas you got a mushroom one a chicken and a um a beef machaca yeah. and then you got like words a corresponding huh <laughs> words are hard words are hard especially yeah. when they're in spanish then you got like a corresponding dip for each of these yeah um and these were delicious Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and this, these were eight ninety five. so I thought the price point was fine. The price this. was perfect for yeah. it. Um, they were fried perfectly. My personal favorite was the beef, mm-hmm. and then the chicken, and then the mushroom. I completely agree. Yeah, yeah. Not, not that there was anything wrong with the mushroom yeah. or the chicken. The beef was just out of this world, and then the other two were, were extremely good. Um, but for eight ninety five, you cannot beat that as an appetizer. No, um, absolutely. And you could easily spill it between three people and it's just a nice little way to try something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also I tried the uh, the tortilla soup and that was interesting. Um, what they did was they actually pureed the tortilla soup with the chicken in it and kind of the broth all together. And then they had some more chicken chunks in it and then pieces of avocado and then um, more tortilla pieces. Uh, it was the flavor was great, but it was just interesting. I've never had a pureed version. Yeah, I of, had a small bite of this, and I didn't really care for it. It seemed. Hey, yeah, I like tortilla soup. It's, yeah, it's one of my favorite. Hey, yeah, things. but it was very brothy. I think, or something. I don't know. There was something interesting about it, like the texture. I guess. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I I wouldn't get it every time, obviously, <laughs> but um, 
I think you're excited to talk about your aunt right now. That's all this, you've been thinking about. I know. This is my favorite thing that they have at this restaurant. Uh, probably more than a couple of the drinks that I loved. This is the carne asada brava, and it's twenty eight ninety five, and you get a very good sized piece of steak. Yeah, and they put a coffee crusted um, rub yeah. on the steak itself, and then they sear it, so you really get this like interesting coffee flavor. And then they put like a pad of this like really good um, spiced butter on yeah. top of it, and it's just unbelievably good. We yeah. had this first in like small little kind of sample sizes at one of the media events we got to go to. And then I went back and actually ordered it as my entree for one night. Yeah. And it was spectacular. It, it's by far the highlight yeah. of both menus. Um, it, I, there's just not enough good things to and say And it doesn't come it. with any sides. You get these two little roasted peppers. Yeah. But that's all you need because it's just this huge steak in front of you. That being said, um, on both menus, upstairs and downstairs, you can add in extra sides. They have it for like three dollars a sure. piece. You can get rice, beans, guacamole, um, fried sweet plantains, exactly so, vegetables, whatever. Yeah, if you think you need more food on top of like a fourteen ounce steak that you'll eat every single piece of, then yeah. go ahead and order it. But you, you don't need it with that one. Just guacamole and uh, the carne asada. You're good. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's good. Um, and then I had the the short ribs. Um, I don't remember the entire name. It was your um, standard short ribs. Braised short ribs, Jalisco. Yeah, I mean, a lot of restaurants have braised short ribs. It was The taste of that was pretty standard. It wasn't like super spicy or anything. Uh, it was actually sweeter mm -hmm. than most short ribs I've ever had. And then it was kind of served with that corn cake. Yeah, it was a manchego corn pudding. Yeah, it, it reminds me of the, the corn cake pudding, I guess, that they used to serve at Chili's. You can still buy it and make it at home. I don't know what that is. I My sister and my mom used to eat it all the time. I don't. Corn pudding from Chili's? Yeah. Oh. Chili's doesn't exist anymore. Or not Chili's. Oh, Chi-Chi's. Chi-Chi's. Chili's is very much yeah. still here. Okay. Chi-Chi's. Chi yeah. All Do right. you remember that? Chi-Chi's kind of... I think they make salsa now, don't they? They, they still make the salsa okay. and chips, but this there was like, like an outbreak of some disease and they shut oh, down all the restaurants. Really? Yeah. It's like a history lesson in uh, it is. failed Mexican restaurants. Yes. And later right. I will tell you about my dive Mexican restaurant that I go to that's next to my house. But uh, getting back to... That meal, um, it was eighteen ninety five or no, sorry, no twenty three ninety five, mm -hmm. and um, it it definitely didn't have that Mexican flavor that I was expecting from it. But I had that. Having said that, I still really really liked it. Um, it was good. I just would assume that I would get that at a different restaurant, not really a Mexican restaurant. I was expecting something more or less what we would get downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, but you know that. I, I loved it. So that's that's all I can say about that. That's, that's all there is to say, yeah. Yeah. But do you um, want to talk about um, Corey's experience? Yeah, we can talk about Corey's experience. Okay. Um, so Julie, Corey, the kids all went, and apparently Julie didn't really enjoy it that much. She considers herself to be a purist of Mexican food and doesn't like <laughs> to go out of the box. Uh, that's Corey words, not, not mine. Yeah, this um, isn't going to go well for you. <laughs> it, she had a hard time of finding something ordinary uh but on the same hand Corey likes experimenting so sure. he had a hard time deciding on which entree he would go with he wrote so, single but i can't believe that he walked away that with only one entree that just doesn't and, sound like Corey. um so i guess julie went with the tacos kind of like exactly. i did and she had the exact same experience and i guess the manager told her that they were just undercooked instead of being cooked and then stale they might have been undercooked which i don't understand how i don't know what the process of making tortillas is so yeah. maybe but i i don't i don't know, know. <laughs> um but i i'm glad that we had the same experience though it wasn't just like a yeah. one one time thing but no it's very good um and then obviously as i've said now for the 15th time they took the kids uh apparently ferris was a little too picky to find anything that he liked. Which but, I can totally understand. Yeah, but yeah. Finley enjoyed the chicken quesadilla <laughs> that she had. Yeah, the, um, so the kids' menu had tacos, cheese quesadilla, chicken quesadilla, veggie, uh, empanadas, and yeah. a grilled chicken breast. Yeah, and uh, all the entrees actually for the kids' menu were five ninety five, and then they came with grapes, applesauce, and rice. Too. Very Spanish. Very that, Mexican food, yeah. That sounds like a good deal for a kids' menu. I don't know. I think I would order that, actually. Yeah, one of each. Yeah. Um, but And then Corey wanted to uh, talk about his highlights. Yep. Um for the food, he obviously said the carne asada yes. brava, the steak, um, which isn't a surprise. Um, and 
he, he liked the variety of the food that was downstairs <laughs> and just actually having the two kitchens to go to. Yeah. Um, or the two different. It's nice because depending on how you're yeah. feeling, you can go and get kind of a more casual thing, sit at the bar, or sit at a, like a high top wooden table downstairs. Or if you want to go a little bit more fancy, you can go upstairs. Yeah. And the kids enjoyed the chips, the mariachi band, um, the booths that they were sitting in, um, which are all very. Oh, booths? The booths. Oh, said booths. Booths. Yeah. I'm, I can't speak. And then uh, the, the painted masks, which. I still can't get over how Ferris and Finley like these masks that are kind of terrifying because whenever I brought mine home and Kylie looked at it, she nearly like had a heart attack and was screaming. But um, it's because you didn't turn the lights on. You were wearing it and then you were screaming. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But before we talk about the drinks, just want to mention the desserts really, really quickly. Okay. This is taking a um, long time. I just want to talk is. about the drinks. It is. Um, there's about five desserts. There's a cheese flan, a molten cake with caramel tres leche mm -hmm. caramelized caramelized banana bread pudding and then coffee and churros uh and the coffee and churros isn't actually coffee it's uh coffee creme brulee oh so, yeah okay um and the desserts are all reasonable priced around four to six dollars um i've had every single one of them and everyone is great the cheese flan is the best by far i only had the uh, banana bread pudding which was fantastic though it was like a little piece of banana bread with kind of caramelized Bananas on top, Absolutely. very good. Had some ice cream with it. No, I would say save room for dessert. I think eventually they are going to try a combination one too. But mm -hmm. uh, now that we're done with the dessert, let's talk about the okay, important great. thing. Alcohol. All right, so there's two bars. One downstairs, yeah. one, at the, one upstairs. Yeah. And you can just go to either one of them, pull up a seat. Um, and each one has kind of a tower of tequila bottles in the middle, mm -hmm. which looks amazing. Um, they do have... It's a full bar, so they have anything that you would want. Um, but obviously, their signature items are the tequilas. Yep. Really good selection of tequila. Um, and they have a big list of handcrafted cocktails, and then obviously a huge list of sp special margaritas. Yep. Um, and really good options. So just for some, a few of their uh, handcrafted um, cocktail drinks, the horse you rode in on was one of my favorites, actually. It's 10 bucks, and it's tequila, ginger beer, um, simple syrup, and then they put in this little black cherry that's been like uh, cooked in a little copper yeah. pot or something. They described the whole process, but I didn't remember the whole thing. But it's delicious. It's not too sweet. It comes in a taller glass. It's yeah. really good. It has a little bit of fizz to it. Um, I know you liked the apple one. Yeah, I did like it. It tastes um, like apple pie. It tasted like apple pie. It wasn't overly sweet. It just tasted like apple that pie liquor. called the Big Apple in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I think it had like a cinnamon sugar rim on it. It did. Yeah. It was very fruity. Um, I know you had the mojito. I had the mojito. I had that several times, actually, um, just because if I have a little too much tequila, that taste starts getting in my mouth, and it, it's, tequila can be very dangerous. So, uh, yeah, I stuck to the mojito, stuck with rum, but uh -huh. I did try almost every margarita at some point in time. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> um, before we go to margaritas, though, I just want to mention that George Clooney's uh, tequila is everywhere. Um, I believe it's called Cosamigas yeah. or, or something. And so they have a drink called the Handsome George, which is named after George Clooney. And it's that, that special tequila that he makes. Um, Along with Claudia Schiffer's husband. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what her what his name is. It, it's Claudia Schiffer's husband. Okay. That's his name. That's his name. Yeah. He had it legally he doesn't changed. doesn't get a name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's got this tequila. It's got um, Contro, um, some agave nectar, fresh lime juice. Um, and that's really good. It's a shorter yeah. drink, but it's... It's it's not too sweet. It's it's good. I would I would definitely try it. Yeah, I also like the um, the chocolate coffee type drink that I got to try that okay. I had with my dessert. Uh, I can't think of the name right offhand. I couldn't even like pick it out on the menu whenever yeah. I looked again. Uh, it, it's somewhere on there, but it's absolutely delicious. Only perfect with dessert. Like, don't order a coffee chocolate type drink with your entree. That's just not smart. But. Um, yeah, let's talk about the margaritas. All right, so yeah, these, are, are, these are definitely the shiner, the shining stars here. Um, my favorite by far is the Sriracha Muchacha, yep. which is a Sriracha margarita. Um, and I think he put in a good like two squirts oh, yeah. into this margarita. There's a floating pepper in it. It's hot. It really is. It's you need spicy. a glass of water with it. At least I did. I love Sriracha. I'll put it on. I'll put it in tuna and whatever. I know Corey will put it on like uh, boiled eggs and just eat yeah. them. He'll like take out the yolks and fill up like a deviled egg. Um, but this was fantastic to me. It's so unique. I've never seen this anywhere. 
a sriracha margarita. So neither have I. Um, they also have a jalapeno margarita called the Stingray. Yep. Yep. And that one, we had it actually two different ways. One time we had it made with jalapeno tequila, and then we've had it the normal way they make it. I would recommend uh, asking if they could make it with the jalapeno tequila. I would too. And just for reference, these are ten fifty a piece, and yeah. you get a fairly good size. They have a kind of signature. Uh, colored glass yeah uh, margarita glasses some of them are like twelve dollars too and they're strong yeah they're not you're not getting a weak drink oh absolutely um and then they they do have your standard margaritas they have flavored ones um they have a blackberry a mango strawberry a paradise one that has like passion fruit in it and stuff so yeah they it's really we could spend all day talking about every single drink that they have there it is absolutely the number one reason to go to Antihitos. And I think in the future, since I've had a f- fair amount of times to try the food, I think I would mainly go back here to have a drink. Yeah. And maybe an appetizer, get the guacamole again. If I'm feeling ambitious, maybe get that steak again. But pretty much just go to the bar. We can order the guacamole there, have a couple drinks. It's a really nice atmosphere. Yeah. I, I feel like my final thoughts on the actual restaurant is downstairs, the most I would do is go order appetizers and drinks. If I went upstairs... I would, you know, I might still do the appetizers and drinks, but every Mm -hmm. once in a while I would get an entree there. Uh, Not not that there's anything wrong with the food. The food is good, especially upstairs. It's great. Uh, It's just for my price point. Um, You know, it's expensive. Buying a $28 steak and then having two $10 margaritas. I mean, you're up to 50 bucks right there by yourself, and that's if you don't want anything else. But I think there's a middle ground. Go and have, you know, an appetizer, get the guacamole, chips and salsa, whatever, and then have a couple drinks. It's nice. Yeah, it it is very, very nice. Um, But in in terms, I I think it's one of the better things at City Walk right now. Uh, The food is definitely fresher than if you go to someplace like Hard Rock Cafe, Bubba Gump, Margaritaville. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, you're just getting really fresh food made there yeah. and you can see all the kitchens you can see where it's being prepared so you know if mexican food isn't your thing i would still recommend stopping in to get a drink or maybe trying one of the tamer appetizers so i, I don't Absolutely. know if that's how you feel about it too no it is well it better be but it's getting angry it is getting angry um well, i think that's about wrapping it up for antihitos Go and have a margarita. Go. Enjoy it. It's a nice stop on the way out of the parks. Um, But we'll be back next week to talk about Marty. Well, not next week. In two weeks to talk about Everything Harry Potter, we're going to say. We're only going to talk about Harry Potter. Yeah. Sorry for all of you who missed us saying Harry Potter stuff. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Potter, Potter, Potter. Potter. This is the Harry Potter show. That filled the Harry Potter quota for this week. (laughs) So, you know, we'll be back to talk about Mardi Gras next week. So see you guys later.